economist, traders and analysts are still poring over that first quarter numbers which was released late yesterday afternoon by the statistics office. So let's read the tea leaves a little bit of the latest economic report as we turn to Bumi Bajama. She is the group head in charge of corporate banking and manufacturing at the First Bank of Nigeria. A good evening to you, madam. And let's get this two-part GDP conversation down to industries, manufacturing, agriculture and banking. Good evening. Welcome. Good evening, Bosin. Thanks for having me. We appreciate this, your coming on the show. Was the overall GDP growth of half a percent in line with your expectations? Um, I would say largely, yes, it is in line with my expectation. Why is that so? If you look at um, all of the indicators prior to the release of these numbers, you will see that we're on to a positive um, growth trajectory. If you look at the PMI figures, that's the Purchasing Manager Index, that had been released, they showed um, numbers above 50, which would represent an um, expansion, expansionary um, trend. Also, if you look at um, the basic fundamental of the economy in terms of the price of oil and the volume of oil. In terms of oil price, we've um, gone significantly from an average of 49.99 to well above 64 for up to year to date. Secondly, in terms of volume, based on ease on open restriction, you have a volume growth from 1.56 million barrels per day to well above 1.76. If you put all of this together, you will see the impact in the contribution by the, both the oil sector as well as the non-oil sector. You see in, in the oil segment clawing back some of the lost uh, momentum in quarter four of 2020 by increasing its contribution to GDP to the level of 9.25. And you see the simultaneous contraction in non-oil contribution to still above 90%, 90%, but below where we were in Q4. But overall, both uh, sectors shows well, show positive trajectory, and the positive momentum reflects in the uh, level of GDP at 0 0.5. 511. In terms of the noise, no, fine, we could have done better than the 0.79 level that we currently are, but the oil, uh, oil sector rebounded significantly. So I would say no surprises, but is this where we need to be? I would say no. There will be a need for concerted efforts, both monetary and fiscal, in order to take us back to the growth path, to take us to the upper level of uh, growth in terms of single digits, we don't want to be at 0 0.11 or 0 0.51. We want to be where our peers, both in Africa and in emerging markets are, which is above in the region of 7% and above. I'm hoping that imperials coming, based on the policies that are in place now, and increased level of activity, we would be able to get there. Okay, let's uh, begin to unpack it a little bit. Let's get to really the tea leaves across the various components of the GDP. So let's talk about manufacturing GDP, which remains steady at 3.0% in first quarter. Give me some facts behind the figures on the manufacturing GDP reading, which comprises of at least about 13 or 16 subsectors of it. Thank you. Actually, the manufacturing sector comprises of 13 activities. And um, in my view, and based on the numbers released, this will be one of the best performance that you've seen from the manufacturing sector in recent years. Take from 2016 to date. This is the first time the manufacturing sector is recording a growth that will be well above the rate of um, population growth rate which makes it like a star in this current period. The only other time we've recorded such um, figures would be Q4 of 2017, when we just came out of the recession of 2016, 2017. But the good thing about the current PM, um, performance is that if you compare it to Q4 performance, in Q4 you had about 10 uh, activities contracting with only about um, three recording positive growth. The converse is true currently. The manufacturing sector actually sh showed a strong performance with over seven se uh, sector, emerging as stars, recording positive performances, positive movement compared to Q4 numbers that are well in excess of 3%. And then even for the sector, for the other six sectors that contracted, you will see that the contraction has actually been moderated with um, some of them trying to 
get into the positive trade tree. But in terms of the stars, the stars will be the cement, food and beverages, motor vehicle, and the usual suspect. But the good thing is that you have paper and pulp and all the other sector that Idado contracted, chemical and pharmaceutical, now showing strong growth, even though some of them still are in contraction. What have been the drivers of um, this growth? Number one, the first driver would be, number one, increase in level of activity owing to ease of restriction and lockdown measures. You have a um, significant uptick in FX supply by the central bank, even though we still have a long way to go. You have ramping up of manufacturing activity, and you also have um, significant demand, especially in food and beverages from household. I will not forget that there's a bit of inflationary elements in the figure, owing to price increases across some of the sectoral products. But all in all, this had been a fantastic performance for manufacturing. And we hope that this uh, performance would um, reverberate across the sector that are contrary, currently contracting, say, in a refinery of yeah. uh, crude palm oil, textiles. But, yeah. um, you know, we'll, we'll, this is positive. We'll, we'll get to agriculture in a short while, because I was going to ask if you were surprised at the surge in the food beverage sector. GDP climbed from 2.15% to 7.11% at the start of the year. What does that tell about how we kick-started the year with the whole virus thing last year? The PMI numbers that we saw on a month-on-month -month basis actually play to this number, is it? Yes, you are right. And like I said before, I mean, if you look at it, it then one of the major drivers of this would be the significance of food expenditure in our household consumption pattern. If you remember the figure released by the Bureau of Statistics for 2019, household food consumption actually constitutes close to 57% of total amount spent by household, with non-food item balancing the rest. But um, not, nonetheless, if you look at um, increased ramp up in economic activities, increased demand, increased uh, prices across a uh, segment, and then you also have something which is unintended. You have value-driven consumption, especially in the beauty segment. If you look at the price of, let me take one of our staple, the price of bread across retail chain in Nigeria, the price of bread currently goes for around 400 to 450 Naira. Look at the value-added bottle of beer. The price is around 250. So there is so much momentum in the uh, consumption of alcoholic uh, beverages because of value addition and also because of the value-driven uh, purchases that have taken place. Also, in terms of the, the, carb the still in food segment, if you look at the carbonated soft drink market, owing to inflation and current restriction around sourcing of raw material, for uh, the first time in a lo very long time, you've had prices increases around carbonated soft drink. This had not happened in times past, but you've seen it now. And then if you mirror this with an increased level of activity across all of the sector and increased production, you will see why you have such a significant level of 7.11 mm, yes. from the prior level of 2 point something percent. I, I, got, I got a point. We'll, we'll uh, talk about uh, agriculture because, again, when you look at growth in, in that sector as well, despite the issues around insecurity and, and what have you, we'll put all of that together when we come back. Then, of course, we'll talk more about your sector specifically, which is the banking sector. We know that you folks are the heart of everything. So put that in mind. Take a little break with us, everyone. We'll be right back in two. This is our Ice Exchange. Okay, we're well, discussing uh, the first quarter GDP 2021. The banking or financial system is at the heart of every country's economic life. And Nigeria is not an exception. Our banking professional on the city tonight is Bumi Bajama, First Bank's group head of corporate banking and manufacturing. Thank you very much for standing by, madam. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so we were just talking about uh, uh, getting into the agriculture sector. Uh, growth in that sector showed some positive reading, about 2.25% uh, in the first three months of this year, despite the whole insecurity wrapping around the country. Uh, give me a sense of this from your view, how we're able to get that, in particular from crop production. Thank you, Bosin. 
Um, like you rightly said, the crop production level is a significant chunk of um, agricultural activity in Nigeria, constituting close to 72%, just slightly under 70, um, 72%. But in terms of what has happened in the agri sector, you will see if of the four activities that comprises the agri sector, you will see positive momentum across each of them, crop production, fishery, livestock, and even fishing that hitherto had been negative, actually recorded positive momentum in uh, Q1 of 2021. Why is this so? The first uh, driver of uh, growth in agri sector had been um, the increased level of activity, but you also have the fact that the current performance in the agri sector of 2.28% uh, is slightly lower than what we recorded in Q4. And why would, that, why would that have happened? If you recall that for the first quarter of this year, you have the social um, security issues across the northern um, region of Nigeria. You have the food blockage earlier in the quarter from um, the food coming from the north to the southern part of Nigeria. You also have the current social security issues in terms of the headers farmers crisis that is impeding the flow of agri uh, agricultural activity and also currently impeding the level of um, activity in that sector. But be that as it may, you've seen the agri uh, sector coming on strong with each of the activity recording positive. But this positive needs to be honest. But um, what the CBN has also done is to overhaul and reject the party aggregation scheme that affects the rice producer, or should I say rice miller in the industry. That scheme had been restructured for effectiveness, even though you've seen a, a bit of a reduction in the volume of performance. I believe that uh, for Q2 and the sector, I mean, for the quarters coming forward, you will see even better and improved performance in this uh, market segment. Okay, so uh, where is the banking sector? Let's bring it home to you. Uh, where is the banking sector of financial services in this growth? What role has your sector played so far in the year when you talk about GDP, you can't leave the banking sector out? Okay, so uh, in terms of banking sector, you know the financial and insurance sector comprises the financial institution and the insurance market segment. The good thing about our sec um, sector in Q1 of um, 2021 is that you see the banking sector coming out of a contractionary period in Q4 to a positive level at 0.46%. You also see the insurance sector coming from a dip of contraction of uh, close to 14% to now um, slightly, re uh, more, uh, in fact, significantly reduced contraction of just above 4.58%. In spite of this, the current level of activity compares favorably with Q4, but is nothing in comparison to where we were in the first quarter of 2020, when the financial and insurance sector actually recorded growth of above 20%. But uh, be that as it may, the positive vibe in the insurance sector has helped to increase their sector contribution uh, and taking some away from banking sector. So the banking sector right now is contributing by 87.55, whereas insurance has uh, increased its contribution significantly from about 86 to well above 12%. What are the drivers of this or the enablers of this performance? The first had been the Mod, um, moderate uptick in the level of uh, FX supply owing to the various periodic intervention of the Central Bank of Nigeria. You also have an uh, improvement in economic activity. You have more sector um, being upbeat in the industrial sector, which has uh, had a positive uh, impact on the insurance sector. You also have uh, that marginal increase in loan level. In fact, I don't even know whether I should say it's marginal because you see the volume of credit to the private sector increasing from 18 trillion as of March to above 21 in uh, March quarter end. That is about 12%. It's actually quite significant. So if you look at the contribution of banking sector, we've expanded the credit frontier in line with the mandate of CBR in, in driving the loan to deposit ratio in um, their cash reserve requirement policy. So you see the banking sector coming strong in that respect. And the insurance um, sector contribution 
complements this to result in a sectorial contribution of about 3.77% to GDP from 307 but this is slightly lower than where we were as of the start of 2020 before the pandemic struck at about 3.8. But given what has happened now and the FX moderation and uh, ease allowing, I believe the banking sector will mirror what is happening in the industry and we even see improved performance across board. Uh, thank on, you. on behalf of all of us, let me say thank you very much to those of you in the banking sector for oiling our GDP. Bumi Bajamo, Group Head, Corporate Banking and Manufacturing at First Bank of Nigeria. We thank you so much for your time tonight on the show.